Hello, Princess on a Pillow here. I am here to do a review slash recap with my opinion on Merit at First Sight, Season 14, Episode 16. It's titled, Are You In or Are You Out? All right, let's get started. First couple is Mark and Lindsay. Let's fix this. Ugh. Let me fix my shirt. Okay, Mark and Lindsay. They're at the apartment. They're eating. Lindsay wants Mark to do a home fertility test. They go behind closed doors and Mark wants to watch a video in order to get it up. Lindsay is a bit annoyed that he can't do it with just her being there. It turns out that Mark is fertile and he's ready to go. The next scene, Mark goes to talk to his friend, John. Mark tells him that Lindsay shows up for him when he needs her the most. But when they argue, he doesn't want her there and he is torn between which way to go because of the ups and downs. My advice to Mark is to fix the downs. Fix it. They argue about the same things all the time. She says he doesn't give enough affection. He says she gives too much affection. I think she needs to stop giving him so much affection and he needs to give her a little bit more attention. That's my advice. Anyway, John's advice is to, to, for him is to stick it out and see what life is like um, with Lindsay after this process is over with. I think Lindsay liked Mark a lot, but I don't think he can give her what she needs in order to be happy. Next, Steve and Noi. We see Noi hanging out with a friend. She is telling the friend that her marriage is rocky. She says sometimes it's good and sometimes they argue. They talk about Steve not having a job. And that was basically that. The next scene we see Steve with Steve's friend comes over to visit Steve and help him pick out a ring for Noi. And Steve said he wants to get Noi a ring because Noi has been putting in a lot of effort into the marriage. So he is actually on the computer designing a ring for her. I would rather you take me to um this is this my alarm is going off. I would rather you take me to a store and have me pick out a ring and try it on. That's what I would rather do and have instead of him designing a ring that he likes for me. Mm -mm. I'm ungrateful, right? Yeah, I am. I don't like Steve. I think he's just doing this for the camera because we never saw him give her that ring. We never saw him actually purchase the ring. We never see him give her the ring. I think Steve is doing this for the camera because he wants people to like him. But a lot of people do like him. They think he's attractive. I think he looks like a cross between Ernie and Big Bird from Sesame Street. That's what I think he looks like. I don't think he's attractive at all. Next is Elijah Wan and Katina. Oh, and I want to say this. That he designed a ring or pretend to design a ring for Noi. So that's telling me that he said yes. Because why would, on decision day, because why would you say no, but you're designing her a ring? Hmm? Huh? And I heard it through the grapevine. I don't know if this is true or not, or just rumors or what. But I heard that everyone said yes, except for Jasmina and Michael. But I don't know how true that is. Okay. Next up is Elijah Wan and Katina. Elijah Wan meets with his mentor he talks about katina and the amount of time she has left for school she's going to, apparently she's going to school for business right now but and she wants to switch to nursing you know what? i can't fault, fault her for that because when you're young you really don't know what you want to do or what you're gonna like so switch it up katina do what you want to do girl but you should have um i don't think she was ready for marriage Elijah one is concerned that it's going to take her a long time to finish school. And Katina wasn't ready to um, to be a wife. She wasn't. She should have worked on herself first. Know exactly what she want to do. She want to go into business or she want to be a nurse, whatever. 
and then decide about um, mar married life. And she wasn't ready to be a wife. Because she, it seemed to me like she's still working on herself. Nothing wrong with that, but, you know, do you first before you attach a husband onto it, especially a husband like Elijah one. And Elijah one, he's selfish. He wants a wife to focus on him and nothing else. He doesn't want a wife that goes to school because she might better herself and, um, make, you know, get a career and start making more money than him. And then he'll feel insecure and he can't, you know, talk down to her like he likes to do and talk shit to her like he likes to do. So, um, he doesn't want a woman with a career or a degree. He doesn't. He wants one that he thinks is below him so that he can treat her and talk to her any kind of way. That's what um, Elijah wants problem is. He's just plain old selfish. Next, it's up. It's Jasmina and Michael. We see Jasmina FaceTime with her friend Miles. Jasmina told Miles that things are going well, but she does not have any romantic feelings for Michael. She said she doesn't look at Michael in that way. Miles asked Jasmina if Michael has made any moves. Jasmina said he holds her hand and he kisses her on the cheek. Miles gives Jasmina some good advice. He basically tells her to talk to Michael about where the relationship is going and Jasmina said if she feels nothing comes decision day, then her answer will be no. Next, we see Michael. He goes over to his sister's house. They sit down to eat. It's all three of his sisters. They sit down to eat and he tells his sisters that things are going well with him and Jasmina. But he needs his wife to not just be his friend. Michael's sister advised him to think about himself and what he wants. I think I don't think that's good advice. I think he should talk to Jasmina. Like Miles said, they need to talk to each other and see where each other is at. Next scene, we see Elijah Wan and Lindsay. They're hanging out. And they're bonding on how over the top they both are. Lindsay tells um, Elijah one that Mark is a good person, but he talks to others about his problem instead of talking to her. Elijah one said he does the same thing with Katina. Elijah one basically tells Lindsay that Katina does not have the life experience in order to be a wife and a mother because she can't cook. Elijah one said that Katina works from home but she has a lot of free time. He also said that their timeline does not match. Lindsay told him that if he says no to Katina, he will regret it. Next up, Michael and Jasmina again. Michael and Jasmina, they go to a dance studio to do salsa dancing. And Michael, Michael is the one that set it up. I think he wants to do something physical where he... He's able to touch her. He, he He's trying to find a reason to touch her. So he takes her salsa dancing. He thinks this might get her excited. But what I think will get her excited is if he washed the dishes wearing nothing but an apron. I think that does it all the time. Because a woman likes to see a man being domesticated and helping out with the, the chores at home. And if he's doing it half naked or... The majority of what he's wearing make him look naked? Hey, I think that would do it for her. <laughs> I think that would definitely turn her on. Anyway, they dance, but um, there were barely any body contact. They were most, mostly holding hands. So after that, they sit down to talk, and Michael is talking about the past and regrets. And, um... He should try flirting with her a little bit. They're having dinner. They're out and they're supposed to be having dinner. Stop talking about the past. Try to flirt with her a little bit, you know? But she's sitting there with her hair scraped back into one. She's not even... you out on a date with your husband. Let your hair loose. Let it fly. Let it... She has her hair scraped back into one. That's not sexy, Katina. Um, not Katina. Jasmina. That's not sexy. I don't think Katina wants to be sexy for him. I don't think she do. 
she doesn't want, I don't think she wants to feel anything for him at all. So she asked him, how does he feel now? Because he's talking about the past. So she asked him, how do you feel now? And that's good for her to ask him that. Because he's still, ta he's still talking about the past. So Michael said he has romantic feelings, but they are not as intense as he would like them to be. I think he's lying. He has intense, intense romantic feelings. Sometimes you see the way he looks at her. He's just wishing that she'll reach over, grab his face, and just kiss him. Anyway, she told him that she does not have any romantic feelings yet. In his confessional, Michael said it's heartbreaking for him that she does not have any feelings for him. And it would be heartbreaking for me, too. If I'm all into some guy and he's not into me at all, yeah, that heart, that break my heart, too. Next, Elijah Wan and Katina. We see Katina meeting Elijah Wan at a restaurant. He has red roses for her. That's nice. He must have fell and bumped his head or something. Don't remember what type of personality he has. Or maybe this is his twin. Mm. Anyway, they sit down to dinner and talk about how um, time went by fast. Elijah Wan talks about her being able to balance school and being his wife. They talk about their time together. And Elijah Wan thanks Katina um, from taking to, to taking him from a boy to a man. What? Mm, I don't know what that's about. I don't know what you're talking about. So then Elijah Wan drinks from the wine decanter. Sometimes when you order wine, they'll bring a little decanter with the wine and they'll bring you a wine glass. And then when you feel like it, when you're ready, when this is... Finish, you pour the wine from the decanter into the wine glass and then you drink the, from the wine glass. But the man drank from the decan decanter instead of the wine glass. Maybe he didn't know. And you know what? If I was in his age, maybe I wouldn't know either. You know, you got to cut the man some slack. You know? You know? Next up, Lindsay and Mark. Lindsay meet up with a friend from lunch. Lindsay says her and Mark are up and down. Same thing Mark says. Lindsay says Mark does not compromise and he is super rigid about everything. He doesn't adapt well with stress or change. She said he needs to live a nice, safe life. Um, I don't like Mark, but that's kind of me too. I like a nice, safe, peaceful life. I don't like chaos. I like a nice, boring life. Don't give me no chaos. Boring, chaos, give me boring. Thank you very much. I've had enough chaos. All I want to do is leave, live a nice, peaceful, smooth life. No yelling, no arguing, no cussing, no fighting, no drama, no none of that. Mm -mm, I can't do it. I can't do it. Did that. Been there. Done it. Uh -uh, done. Never, ever again. I want a boring life. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay? So I'm with you, Mark. I understand that. Yeah, she said he wants a nice, safe life. Lindsay asked her friend what she thought of Mark at the wedding. The friend said Mark is bland like white bread. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Damn lady. Lindsay said that Mark has a good heart and he is a softy and he will be a good father. Whatever, Lindsay. She said she loves him and she thinks he's great, but he does not give her sparks and butterflies. So she's undecisive of, on what to do for decision day. Her friend tells her to make a list. And I'm the type of person, I'll make a list. I make a list for everything. She should make a list of pro and cons and see, you know, where she falls. where Or where he falls on the pro or con list. But I'm the type of person, I love a list. I'll make a packing list. I'll make a grocery list. I'll make a to-do list. I'll make a, I'm, I'm a list person. I like to make lists. Okay, next, the couples all get together to play flag football. Mark chooses his wife. They're choosing teams, and Mark chooses his wife. Elijah one does not choose his wife. Um, at first, he does not. Mark chooses Lindsay first, but Elijah one does not choose Katina first. Um, but Katina did well. She did well. Eventually, Mark got hurt. He was underground, rolling around, screaming, but it was just a leg cramp. So after the game, they're standing around talking and Steve asks everyone how they were feeling about decision day. Mark said he feels positive. 
That's telling us that Mark said yes. They're telling on themselves. Lindsay jokingly says, I'll let you know. <laughs> Katina says she feels fine. That's telling us Katina said yes. Michael said he is feeling good about decision day. Him and Jasmina are on the same page. No, y'all not. You're feeling her. She's not feeling you. Y'all not on the same page, Mike. What are you talking about? In her confessional, Jasmina said she does not feel secure in her marriage to Michael. What does that mean you don't feel secure? I don't understand what that means. Mm -mm. Noah said it's a big decision and it's going to be a surprise. Hmm. Steve said he is base, basing his decision off of Noy's flag football skills. Well, I already thought I already think he said yes because he's designing a ring for her. Why would you design a ring for someone and if you're gonna say no on decision day? And, and I think he didn't even give her the ring. He didn't even buy the ring. I think he was just showing off for the camera. That's what I think. Anyway, that's it for that. Let me see. Lindsay and Mark. Mark is driving Lindsay to a surprise. So he takes her to his mother's house for a romantic dinner. He, and he got her her favorite, sushi. That's nice. So they're talking, they're eating and talking. And Lindsay wants to modernize the house because Steve wants to live in the house. So she said, okay, but let's modernize it. Steve, nah, Steve don't want to change the house. Steve wants the house to stay exactly the way it is. He said, maybe paint it, but mm -mm. he don't want to get rid of the furniture, the old furniture that's been there since... 1960 <laughs> he wants that furniture to stay who wants to live with we want we want modernized my uh mark what the hell but he wants everything to stay the same he does not want it to change that's ridiculous are you crazy and lindsay tells him i don't want to live in the past i don't want to live in your past let's live in the future and she's right what the hell mm -mm -mm. So after they, you know, they talk and they disagree, it didn't turn into a fight, thank God. They end up going, um, I think there was on the deck or on the roof, I don't know, and they are dancing, they're doing a waltz to the music. Next scene, at least they didn't argue and fight and get all upset with each other. Next scene, it's their last night together and they are in bed with the cats. And I used to have a cat and my cat used to be all up in my bed. She had her own bed, but she'd rather be up next to me in my bed and she was like, indoor cat so it was fine with me so yeah they're in bed with the cats and mark thinks that the cats help their relationship and Lindsay told mark that she will miss his cat rocky more than more than him because the cat showed her more love <laughs> that's a shame that's a shame next steve and noy steve and noy are out to dinner they talk about how they know they knew they were ready for marriage. They talk about not living together together after decision day. Noe tells him that she doesn't know what it's like him having a job. Steve said his um track record shows that he's capable. He's you know his track record shows that he's capable. She doesn't know your track record, Steve. She didn't know you when you had a job. That's what she just said. I don't know you when you had a job. He says his track record speaks for him. She doesn't know anything about your track record. She wasn't with you when you had a job. What is his problem? You see, that's why she posts stuff on social media. Because she can't talk to him. She, he doesn't hear what she's saying. You know, he just wants to talk and protect himself and think that what he's saying is right. Instead of listening to what she's saying. She says, I don't know you as a person having a job. I don't know. I didn't know you when you had a job. He's talking about his track record. Your track record has, record has nothing to do with this. She doesn't know your track record. She doesn't. Uh, I can't stand this guy. She, so she tells him she needs to see action. Instead of listening to him talk, talk, talk. She needs to see him work. You know? And then he says, he asks her if she knows what a sales engineer is. She says no. And he still doesn't tell her what a sales engineer is or what a sales engineer does. I think a sales engineer sells technology, equipment. He's a salesperson. He sells stuff, right? He sells engineering stuff. That's what I would think. 
But instead of telling her what a sales engineer is, because he asked her, he said, "Does you do you even know what a sales sales engineer is?" She said, "No." So you figured he would tell her. No, he doesn't tell her. What he starts bab blabbling about is he start babbling about, oh, I became a sales engineer, and I did it for four years. And so she said she has never seen you work. What does that have to do with her seeing you work? You're telling her you were a sales engineer for four years. And what I think it is, is I think Steve likes the title sales engineer, making him sound big and important and smart. But he doesn't like the job. He doesn't like being a sales engineer. I think that's what it is. He likes the title because it sounds good. But he doesn't like the actual work. Yeah, I think that's what's going on with him. He thinks for some reason that we should throw a party or celebrate him being a sales engineer for four years. I, I'm pretty sure there's a whole bunch of sales engineer people out there who have worked in that field for 10 years, 15 years. You worked it for four years and you want, what do you want, a lollipop? What do you want? Why are you telling us that? We don't give a shit. We don't care. Who cares? You don't have a job now, do you? <laughs> what the hell? I don't get him. I don't understand him one bit. He think that that should show him being a sales engineer for four years. That should show that he's capable of doing anything. No, it just shows that when the pandemic came, you got laid off and you sat on your ass and hasn't worked since. That's all that's showing us. That's, that's what it shows me. So now it tells him I can only go off of what I see. And I see you doing absolutely nothing. Those weren't her words. Those are my words, but that's what she meant to say. She tells him, you say you have things in the works, but where is the income? And he gets a little annoyed because she's making sense and he has nothing to say. So he said, we already talked about this and you're not being fair. What do you mean she's not being fair? She wants her husband to contribute financially to the household. How is she not being fair? He's ridiculous. I just can't with him. Next scene. It's their last night together and they're laying in bed talking. And Noy asked Steve what would he have done differently. He said get a job and eat the pasta. And they laugh. I don't think that's funny. I don't find that funny at all. You should get a job. And you should have ate that damn pasta instead of bitching about it. But they laughed. They thought that was real funny. That wasn't that funny. That wasn't funny. Mm -mm. She asked him what should she have done differently. He basically said um, not snap at him. <laughs> not snap at him. When did she snap at him? He's delusional. His sensibilities are so delicate. He's ridiculous. Next is Elijah Wan. It's the last day in the apartment. Um, Katina is packing to leave. Elijah Wan said he needs time to himself to think and weigh the pros and cons. Elijah Wan asked Katina how would she feel if she ended up single the next day because the next day is decision day. She said she would be sad. And her saying that she'd be sad tells you that she's going to say yes. She doesn't want to make herself sad, so she's not going to say no, so she's going to say yes. So that tells you that Steve's going to say yes and Katina's going to say yes. She asked him the same question, and he said he would be sad, but he'd get over it. That was a dig. I think that was a dig. That bastard. That was a dig. He didn't have to say... I would get over it. He said, yeah, I'd be sad too. That's all he had to say. Yeah, I would be sad too. I'd be sad, but I'd get over it. <sighs> just because he, he put that dig in, I would just say no, just to spite him. Yeah, just to spite him. I am petty. Yep, I'm a petty person. I sure am. <sighs> the next... Next, they show um, Katina. She's sitting in her confessional, and she's crying, and she's petting her wig. <laughs> and I don't 
don't know if it's from that scene, why she's sitting there crying, patting her away. It could be from anything because she cried a lot because he hurt her feelings a lot. But she's sitting there crying, patting her wig. When she sees the show back, I wonder how, how she feel. Uh, how does her mother feel? How does her loved ones feel? They must be heartbroken for her when they see how much she cries and how much Elijah Wan hurt her feelings. So the producer asked her, how does she feel about getting divorced? And she said, it's dr a draining feeling. Okay, but Elijah Wan told Katina, back, no, they, the scene is back to Elijah Wan and Katina again. And Elijah Wan tells Katina to be selfish when she makes her decision because he will be selfish as well. And we know that about him. We know he's a selfish prig. We know that. So that was no um big reveal. We know he's selfish. Anyway, next scene, we see Mike and Jasmina. Mike is lying in bed with, and he's lying in bed. And Jasmina is packing. And Mike, Michael said decision day came quickly. They both basically said that um, during their time apart, they're going to reflect and think on their decision. Big whoop. In her confessional, Jasmina said she has to think about if there is a spark. Jasmina. A spark is not a feeling. I mean, a, a, a spark is a feeling. It's not a thought. She said she's going to think about, um, think about if there's a spark. If there's a spark, you're going to know. You have to think about it. A spark is not a thought. It's a feeling, Jasmina. Anyway, this is the end of my review. I will be back. I will be back next week because we want to see. Who chose who? Who didn't choose who? Like I said, I heard a rumor that they all said yes, except for Jasmina and Michael. So I will be back next week and we'll see what happens. Thank you so much for watching. Princess on a Pillow here. Bye.